Hi folks, welcome. Uh, we are still in uh, on chapter number seven, and this is the sixth lecture, and this will be the last lecture in ch uh, uh, chapter seven, the generation of high test voltages. We talked in the last two lectures a very interesting. Um, uh, a, equipment used very widely in all I mean it's an expensive uh, uh, equipment so may not be every high voltage lab has an impulse generator but all good labs are equipped with impulse generator to produce the lightning impulse voltage shape and now since last uh, uh, two three decades or in fact, I had it in mid 80s, an impulse generator having capability of not only producing the lightning impulse wave shape, but also the switching impulse wave shape. As uh, you can see, this is a 7200 kV uh, impulse generator uh, with 36 stages put in series. Uh, and uh, you, we have also learned that uh, each stage, in this case 200 kV, uh, makes it 36 ta uh, times 2 is 72, uh, uh, 7200 kV. And uh, in uh, the impulse generator, we have learned that the charging capacitors are charged over a uh, charging resistor in parallel and they discharge in series with the help of a spark gap that is breakdown uh, over the sphere gap so that when the breakdown takes place all are connected uh, in series so the capacitors discharge in series and uh, uh, very high voltage is obtained we have also learned how do we shape uh, the voltage? I mean, how do we produce the uh, desired wave shape by changing the set of resistors R1 and R2? You can have only a limited set of resistors. You cannot have uh, unlimited set of resistors because uh, in say, uh, 36 stage, uh, each value resistor you will need. 36 times so very large number of resistors need to be changed every time if you want to change produce different wave shape we were talking about the uh, triggering of uh, this uh, impulse generator we did uh, uh, learn that uh, the uh, it is done with the help of a uh, device you can say called trigatron the trigatron the diagram as you can see it here uh, is put on the bottom most of that's the first stage of the grounded sphere so the sphere uh, when you charge the uh, impulse generator one sphere in each stage is charged to the charging voltage u naught so we as we can see this is the high voltage this is charged and on the grounded uh, uh, sphere opposite to the this one only in the first stage the triggering device is uh, installed and this triggering device is given a pulse to the order of 10 kV and very fast pulse uh, of the order of 0 0.5 kV per nanosecond rise time. So uh, a very fast pulse when you give high voltage pulse naturally the rod on which you give the pulse has to be uh, um, um, brought on the device under insulated uh, conditions. So there is a bushing as you can see there is a bushing through which it penetrates the 
hollow sphere from one side and then uh, it is uh, connected over a very high resistance to the wall of the sphere and on the uh, other side of the sphere through the you can say the diameter of the sphere there is a small few millimeter diameter annular gap and that ends the rod ends at the annular gap and around this portion of the rod there is uh, you can see the some uh, material insulating material again which has a tendency to track we have learned what is tracking the surface breakdown or surface discharge we call it some materials have got very high tracking property that material is put and on the uh, so the rod is at high voltage and on the other side of the tracking material as you can see has condition and you put a, a metal foil and ground it this is the metal foil and ground it so when the pulse is applied to the rod it produces tracking or surface breakdown or surface discharge and the other side of the uh, gap uh, i mean other ele electrode that is other sphere of the uh, gap is already having high voltage so and it is fixed at some desired value the gap distance and the charging uh, uh, voltage u not and then when you give a pulse because of the surface discharge at the annular gap the triggering of breakdown takes place it is the same thing you can say that mm, uh, when we have learned uh, lightning discharge and we what happens that on the ground electrode some phenomenon begins people have even tried to artificially uh, produce uh, uh, some uh, electrical phenomenon at the ground electrode to attract the lightning to uh, uh, discharge or to uh, strike upon that particular electrode so in, on the same principle uh, lightning conductors uh, you can say active lightning conductors with some voltage on the ground electro uh, the concept has taken now you can read about it this very advanced uh, technology uh, but also controversial so this is how the tigertron works i just want to repeat what we have done now this is one way if you have tigertron that you fix the desired gap distance required and the required value of u not under the condition no breakdown takes place and then you if you want to achieve the breakdown to take place that means the impulse generator to trigger you give the pulse and the breakdown in the first gap takes place with the help of Uh, trigger pulse at the desired value of u not applied on the other other side of the uh, sphere u not u not applied on the other side of the uh, and this u not you know will be applied on all the sphere gaps at each stage so the then the whole triggering takes place that you get the output voltage this is one way but trigatron development has taken place later earlier people have also worked there are two more ways that you can uh, trigger the impulse generator one would be that you fix the gap distance between the spheres and we have also learned that the gap distance fixed on the first stage is smallest and 
by small distance it increases in every stage even if there are 36 by a small say even half a millimeter uh, in other stages it increases and uh, you fix the gap distance uh, d you can say this is the d as you can see gap d mm. and then you increase the voltage for that particular d you have an idea that at what voltage applied to the high voltage uh, sphere the breakdown in the gap would take place at that particular gap distance so then you uh, slowly increase the uh, voltage applied on the high voltage uh, spheres that will be at all stages till a breakdown occurs that is one way to trigger another way would be that you fix the voltage you set the gaps to be quite long and put a certain magnitude of uh, u naught on the high voltage uh, spheres in all stages and then the uh, voltage is fixed the gap distance is set quite long no breakdown is taking place obviously when you reduce under this condition the gap distance under the condition when on one high voltage electrode on on all high voltage electrodes a desired magnitude of voltage is there you you move the spheres in such a way very slowly there will be a distance under reduced conditions when a breakdown will occur so that is another way of uh, triggering the impulse generator that is not that uh, accurate when you do it with physically uh, by increasing the voltage or reducing the gap distance these are not very accurate the best is to have a trigatron then you can have the breakdown voltage or the um, I, I mean, uh, for a particular you fix u naught and then you apply trigger you get the output of desired magnitude you have already set r1 r2 etc so the main aim is you get the uh, breakdown or uh, sorry output of the impulse generator of desired shape and desired mag uh, magnitude of that is up the, uh, the highest peak voltage output voltage from the impulse generator which is required to be applied on the test objects now there have been some um, furthermore development in the impulse generators uh, in the modern impulse generators uh, sphere gaps have been enclosed in a closed chamber why do you want to do that you can imagine uh, these are uh, in open or even in big lab there will be some uh, dust or particle deposition on the spheres when the surface of the spheres is not very clean it may not give you the exactly same uh, magnitude of voltage for achieving breakdown at a particular gap distance at the point you may not produce the uh, uh, breakdown between the two spheres if the condition at the same uh, distance set at the same distance at the same voltage again and again you would like to but a layer of uh, uh, pollution deposition over the spheres will affect the breakdown voltage adversely and you may not get the breakdown for a given this gap distance set at the same voltage again so these sphere gaps have been enclosed 
in a chamber to protect or to prevent the pollution layer to deposit on the uh, spheres. These spheres, as I mentioned, are normally copper spheres. And okay, maybe corrosion, um, uh, corrosive layer formed also on the you know, copper uh, electrodes. These are nothing but spherical electrodes. So they are put in enclosed chamber. Enclosed chamber could be controlled air or people are even trying to build the uh, controlled, I mean the enclosed chamber sealed and instead of air people have put SF6 gas. You can imagine SF6 gas is having three times more breakdown uh, strength. So in, if you uh, uh, make the chambers for each sphere, in fact, there will be one chamber for all the sphere gaps, whatever may be the number in an impulse generator. If you use instead of air, SF6 gas in that chamber. Breakdown strength is more. So under that condition, you can set smaller gap distance and you would need smaller dimension spheres, smaller diameter spheres to have the same effect. The purpose of choosing a sphere gap is to produce in the gap a weakly non-uniform field for which the breakdown voltage at a given gap distance consistent. So that consistency can be achieved with smaller sphere gap diameter and setting smaller dimensions. So that will uh, reduce the overall size of the impulse generator. So that is the modern development. You can read about it. Uh, such kind of sphere gaps uh, provided in impulse generator. So here we uh, close uh, talking about the impulse voltage generator and triggering etc. The next and the last uh, equipment we are going to talk is high impulse current generator. You would say uh, but, uh, under the high voltage conditions why do you need a high impulse current generator? Yeah, I, I also thought for several times. But high impulse current generator, impulse current, mind it. What we are going to talk about, not the power frequency current generator, but we are going to talk about the impulse generator. That means the uh, impulse current generator. That means it will produce a uh, high current magnitude of desired shape uh, in the pulse form. Where do we get uh, this kind of a uh, high current in high voltage systems? See, when a short circuit occurs, uh, the short circuit is cleared by a circuit breaker. But when it is cleared, or just before it is cleared, uh, the current flowing under the normal short circuit conditions in the network is power frequency. But by opening the power frequency current, because of the instant uh, at which it is opened, there will be certain magnitude, there will be sub certain parameters and like inductance and capacitance in the network. So a, an over voltage is produced. We have learned how switching surges are produced. And we have also learned the uh, when lightning strikes on the network, on electrical network, power network, again, the lightning over voltages are produced. And both the lightning over voltages and the switching over voltages are produced in the form of a pulse voltage. 
not power frequency wave voltage pulse voltage and that pulse uh, form of voltage travels that forms the traveling wave hitting insulation on its path so it is the lightning strike which also produces lightning over voltage what is the shape of the current injected by lightning you must give a thought the lightning current injected on the transmission network or anywhere has got a impulse form of a wave shape the lightning current injected anywhere on the earth has is a is an impulse form of high current so if you want to venture make experimental investigations with lightning current injection you would need an a high impulse current generator so the purpose of high impulse current generator is not to test any equipment it is to experiment with the high uh, lightning current injected on the network how will it cause damage what is the repercussion etc by this current by this impulse form of high current so to produce an experiment with high impulse current you need an equipment known as high impulse current generator so this is also uh, working actually on the same principle you can say uh, as uh, just a minute yeah it is also working almost in the same principle that uh, a capacitor is uh, uh, or number of capacitors are charged in parallel uh, with dc and discharged over the damping impedance uh, that is resistance and inductance over the test object uh, in series so and let's uh, read here what is uh, written the high power frequency yeah we have talked about it high power frequency the flow of high current results in storage of high energy in the inductance of the network we, that is for power frequency and when we have uh, that is 50 hertz the uh, that is uh, uh, this energy is released in the developing uh, uh, ex excessive over voltage um, is released in giving rise to excessive over voltage across the circuit breaker contacts on opening which travels towards the st uh, uh, still energized network because whenever circuit breaker opens one side of it is energized another one is grounded so uh, the side which is grounded uh, they uh, will not be uh, um, the, uh, there, there is no voltage there but on the other side there will be high voltage impressed upon and that is still energized healthy part of the network in the form of traveling waves and the magnitude of this voltage is produced uh, uh, the switching over voltage transient produced will depend upon the magnitude of the current the instant it is the circuit breakers open if if the instant at which the circuit breakers open there is a finite value of current the uh, higher magnitude of over voltage will be produced that is why it is tried that the circuit breaker opens when the voltage across the circuit breaker is zero and the current is minimum over there so this is taken care and uh, yeah let me see that uh, 
Yeah. We'll talk about it. Yeah, the same transient voltage or uh, same transient over voltage traveling wave are also produced by the impulse form of current injection by the lightning strikes. So that is what I've also talked about and uh, uh, it is defined as uh, now the you know, the uh, damage what it what can be caused because of this lightning current injection on the network are phenomenal. We have talked about the in detail in chapter five about the uh, damage caused by lightning strikes. In fact, when the lightning strikes, the potential between the clouds and the ground is brought to zero, only thing which affects, which ha uh, has damaging properties is nothing but the current. And so any, any breakdown, any short circuit brings down the voltage to the lower level. The uh, damage is always caused because of high current. Let me power frequency, let me lightning impulse. Uh, current. So uh, the damage, the damage caused by direct injection of high impulse form of current accompanied with lightning strikes are multifaceted. The damage caused by the continuous power frequency short circuit currents are uh, very well known. We have known, but the damage caused uh, by lightning current are uh, multifaceted. So we have learned about the damage cause. And one of the damage cause when it strikes, when the lightning impulse current strikes on the live transmission line conductor, depending upon the characteristic impedance of the transmission line, the current uh, uh, produces a high impulse form of over voltage the impulse form of high current divides we presume in either direction that is when it is on striking on a conductor half the current in either direction flows and the magnitude of the half of the current injected by lightning multiplied by this characteristic impedance develops the lightning over voltages that we have. So we are now on uh, design and construction of impulse current generator. As you can see, this is nothing but uh, as this is UAC being applied here uh, over a uh, the resistor R, R prime, uh, as we took in the, the case of uh, uh, impulse voltage generator over a charging resistor R prime, we you know, put a diode and just after that there is a capacitor. You can say the main capacitor, main, main charging capacitor in the circuit with high voltage DC power supply over a charging capacitor R prime to a voltage uh, magnitude uh, of let's say u naught is the voltage magnitude across the capacitor DC DC voltage u naught is applied across the capacitor hmm? and uh, so this is a half wave rectifier circuit as you can see it here and uh, then we need um, the capacitor is charged on uh, is discharged sorry the capacitor is discharged on the test object which will have um, its own resistance and inductance uh, over uh, over a damping uh, 
this is R2, L2 is the uh, test object parameters uh, over a damping resistance and inductance R1 and L1. This is this is the damping circuit as you can see. This is the damping circuit or uh, uh, yeah, damp damping parameters, uh, damping impedance also you can call it uh, R and L for where which is taken uh, very often uh, are to be uh, the resistance of the damping impedance to be variable and that is put the damping impedance is put in uh, series with a spark cap as we had done in the case of high impulse voltage generator so unless and until the spark cap uh, breaks down the spark gap has to have a short circuit between the two spheres the current developed will not be uh, impressed upon the test object so to be able to impress the uh, current the impulse current we'll see uh, on the test object the spark gap must all, again have a uh, uh, breakdown and we can have uh, for producing higher magnitudes of impulse currents a bank of discharge capacitors connected in um, parallel as the same way as in the case of impulse generator a number of discharge capacitors C in this circuit are connected in parallel and an high impulse current IM varying with time flows in the, in the circuit. Here RM is the measuring resistor and we measure the magnitude of the current over RM with the help of an uh, oscilloscope. So this is how the basic circuit is uh, produced, uh, to, is used to produce an or high impulse current of desired shape. So the next slide, oh, this is interesting slide. You might not have seen it earlier. The, you see the, how many, uh, as you see down there, there are uh, an impulse current generator circuit with multi-discharge capacitors. And this is the circuitry, how it is connected in uh, parallel. And a 200 kilo ampere, it's a very high amperage impulse current generator uh, using uh, 100 kV uh, for charging and uh, 250 kilojoule energy rating in uh, modular uh, construction with 10 discharge capacitors as you can see these uh, down there in uh, figure B in the photograph there are uh, each one of these cylindrical things are forming the capacitors 10 discharge capacitor that means 10 circuit what we discussed just uh, before uh, are put in uh, parallel to discharge in series. Ten, 10 discharge capacitors uh, and this is a courtesy from uh, high volt in uh, Dresden, Germany. So this is an interesting equipment once again. We will uh, see here this is a central uh, connection is here and these are these are hollow tubes used for, con for connection because they are, they are very uh, high current is flowing. This is the hollow tube for connection as you can see it here. Then uh, this is this circular blue things are the capacitors and uh, uh, the, uh, the whole uh, number of uh, stages are connected with flat strips. You know, these are the flat strips 
used for connecting these uh, capacitors and various parts. So this is a very interesting generator. We will learn a little bit about their uh, connectivity and analysis. Anal analysis of the circuit producing impulse generator. As you can see, U0, we have learned what is U0. U0 mm, uh, will be uh, utilized by the, uh, in the, uh, yeah, one, one second. So uh, this is the damping. This one is the damping. Damping uh, network in the L co constituting of L1 and R1. So U0 is being applied over the L1 uh, and L, uh, R1 when the spark gap triggers, that means breakdown occurs at the spark gap and the current is uh, impressed on the test object having parameters of R2 and L2. So as you can see, the R IMT plus L D I M by D T uh, plus one by C the integration of I M over T. So that is the total uh, R and L and C in the network will uh, be taken care. The effective impedance Z of the discharged loop can be given as this one, as you can see, this is the effective impedance of the network. The time varying current in the charge uh, circuit is given by this relation, the I, I M. I M is for the maximum, or you can see the peak value of the current, which will, of course, decay. And uh, yeah, when we go further down in this, the, uh, the uh, uh, angular frequency of the oscillating current uh, can be estimated to be this way angular frequency of the current and T1. T1 is nothing but uh, the wave front time. T1 is the wave front time. That is why T1 is made equal to Tf. F is for front here is given this way or this can be derived analytically in this fashion. And the peak value of the output impulse current can be calculated by putting T is equal to uh, T1. Huh? So, so uh, I max can be estimated in this way. The maximum impulse current magnitude is uh, can be estimated this way. And the time taken for the impulse current to decay to 50%. See, the impulse, it be voltage or current are defined in the same way. Time taken to peak T1 and time taken to decay to 50% of its peak value by T2. Here, this T2 has been taken to be in the form of TH. T, uh, TH. TH H stands for half wave. I mean, time taken to decay to half value of the uh, peak current, TH and TF, F for front. That, that The same way as we have defined T1 and T2 in the case of high uh, impulse voltage. Here you can say T1, uh, T2 or TF and TH also. And uh, yeah, so this has, uh, you can have your uh, uh, analysis, you can do it yourself very much, you're all good in mathematics. And uh, further, uh, people have experimented, as we have seen, that T, uh, 
the R1 and L1 are the damping resistors. So that uh, uh, they determine uh, very much the shape. The potential equation for the discharge circuit can be written as U0 is equal to for this one as we have seen already. Yeah, fire, fire. Yeah. See, this, uh, ba this uh, R1 and L1 are the damping parameters. When you change the R1 and uh, L1, L1 may be fixed, but if you change the value of R1, you can have different shape of output uh, current. So uh, this has been plotted by uh, Gonos, by it is given in the uh, literature reference by Gonos. for three conditions of R1. When R1 uh, is uh, uh, damp, I mean the three conditions of damping. One, as you see, over damped. So this, this curve is giving you over damped. And the bottom most is giving you the under damped conditions, you know. The bottom most, uh, is give, giving you this the uh, solid line is under damped condition in between the line in between is you can say is the critically damped condition critically damped conditions in between so th i mean by all is done by changing R1. Normally, the impulse voltage, sorry, impulse current generators work under under damped conditions. Normally, they work, but you can change. So, in uh, this uh, condition, uh, R1 uh, for critically damped condition, R1 was equal to one ohm. Imagine just one ohm, and uh, for overdamped uh, conditions, R1 was R1 is equal to 1.5 ohms, 1.5 ohms, and for underdamped conditions, the uh, R1 was taken to be 0 0.75 ohms only. So uh, when you change the value of R1, the damping uh, mm, uh, resistor, uh, you, from 0 0.75 ohm to 1.5 ohm, you get different uh, shape of the impulse voltage output. Sorry, I again not impulse voltage, impulse current output. Output current waveform under over and critically damped conditions. Over, under, and critically damped conditions. This was measured by uh, Gonos, and uh, that is how you can determine the shape of the output impulse. Current. Yeah, by vary uh, the damping resistance R1. Uh, this plot was uh, for uh, a total capacitance, for a total, you can say C total, C total. That means the total capacitance in each stage, if there are 10 stages, it will um, be uh, 1 by each stage, the total, some total. For the total capacitance of 
20 micro fan. You can imagine, it's a very, very high magnitude of capacitors installed there. When the total capacitance works out to be 20 microfarad, it's a very high capacitor. So the, the capacitors installed there have a very high magnitude of uh, capacitance. So, and total um, inductance is five micro, you can say L total is five micro Henry's. in the discharge circuit. So this is a uh, uh, an equipment which requires very high value of capacitors and uh, may not be such high value of inductors. And if you want to refer more about it, there is IEC, International Electrotechnical Country Commission 600 six zero you can refer to this and the standard impulse wave shapes just like standard uh, uh, lightning over voltage standard la switching over voltage wave shapes we have defined the standard impulse uh, wave shapes are one by twenty 4 by 10, 8 by 20, and 30 by 80, and 30 by 80 microseconds. That means the rise time is 1 microsecond and the decay to 50% uh, of the uh, maximum value of current uh, vary 20, 10, 20, 80, and the rise time varying 1, 4. Uh, uh, this is uh, oh, for 8, 8 by 20. Yeah, fine. Yeah, and the rise time is varying between 1, 4, 8, and 30, increasing. The decay time you can say is varying 20, 10, 20, and 80 microseconds. And the tolerance allowed in both in the rise time and, of, uh, and the decay time to 50% of its value is plus minus 10%. Tolerance of allowed is 10% in both the values of you can say T1 and T2 or TF and TH as we have talked about. So this is how the impulse generator, uh, so, uh, the imp high impulse current generator works and also some laboratories equipped with this uh, instrument, this equipment, which is uh, used for basically for research uh, purposes. No, not all high voltage uh, laboratories may have an impulse current generator, but some do have all over the world. So let's uh, uh, talk about some inherent features what we have been talking uh, in this chapter of seven of the high impulse generators. The all the high voltage equipment need to go through test with high voltage, uh, higher voltage than their rated voltage during the manufacturing process. Right in the beginning, we talked about every uh, factory producing high voltage equipment must be must have a test. A high test voltage generator of the required type and because they must ensure that the quality of the product produced is good and the only way to produce 
is uh, test with high voltage will come we, other tests other measurements are also done which we will learn on in the next chapter the measuring quality measurement techniques and then uh, the test voltages are uh, always two to three times higher than the uh, rated voltage to ground the conductor voltage to ground that is u naught uh, ur is divided by root 3 to give you u naught so two to three times of u naught are the test voltages which are very high and the power ratings of the high yeah very interesting thing is uh, you can imagine whenever we have gone for high uh, high voltage test um, generator or equipment the current requirement is very very small it's around one ampere and uh, uh, then the current because the current requirement is very you know, small because the test is performed under open circuit condition of the uh, insulation and the equipment therefore the power rating of all test equipment is not very high unlike the power rating of the power system equipment i mean if you compare the power uh, power transformer and the test transformer the uh, test transformer would have its power rating to be very very small as compared to the high voltage power transformer i mean, I mean when you have a voltage of uh, 800 kV uh, uh, transmission voltage uh, even the uh, high voltage power transformer is working at 800 kV and the power rating of that transformer would be very very high but in the case of test high test voltage generators the power rating because the current is very very small is very uh, the power rating is very low but the insulation level provided is high because you have to generate higher test voltage than the normal working condition test the normal working condition uh, of the network so unlike the power frequency uh, equipment here the um, power ratings are small but the voltage ratings are high are high so more of insulation smaller cross section of conductor so i mean generation or production of test equipment requires entirely different uh, techniques so with this we close the chapter uh, 7 and next we will be talking about the measurement systems in the for the quality assessment of you know, the high voltage equipment the quality control also we call it we'll be talking about in the next lecture. okay then see you in the next lecture